all right all right what is up everybody welcome welcome to the sixth episode of the lost in lorcana podcast where we have a, a good amount to talk about we're fresh off of the atlanta uh elite challenge um we all got back really early in this morning and one of our very own let me switch the scene here one of our very own uh hamza khan uh who is with us I, I'm oberon i'm just saying his name your name's out there i mean there's a lot of i'm assuming there's a lot of hamza khans in the world but there are. is is it <laughs> is it safe to say i think it's safe to say that we now have the hamza khan with us is that i what do you think are you the hamza very khan safe very safe to say <laughs> they, he said very safe to say let me get my camera on i'm a mess i just got in so sorry y'all but um but yeah so we're gonna be i mean obviously most of this is gonna be like an interview with hamza khan having a very unique um I would, not a unique deck as far as colors but he definitely breaks the mold as far as how many cards are in his deck so we're gonna go over a lot of that stuff so i'm not gonna go over all of it right now we'll get into it um we'll be going over the our, our overall impressions first real quick i'll go over my impressions and then we're also here with jeremax um who was not there but jeremax you could say what's up what's up yo yo um but he's just gonna kind of work through this if he has any questions he'll ask but obviously he is another co-host so um he'll be rocking with us um, per usual but uh yeah so to start off uh well jeremy are you going to chicago i meant to ask oh yeah baby i oh, told okay. you remember you, this yeah. is the only chance you guys had to win something because it's all on me <laughs> yeah okay uh, okay um well maybe you'll be going to more events after you hear about how much uh these serialized mickeys and promos are going for it's it's kind of wild we're not gonna go over that uh but <laughs> Uh, overall impressions uh, to start off, I'll just go over with me because pretty much most of this podcast is going to be all about Obron, Hamza, and and how he did and how he got to, to top eight. So um, to brief for my experience, I didn't do as good as I wanted to. Obviously, you know, I want to be top 128. I was not there. I dropped out after the seventh round um because i was gonna only be able to get at most i think it was 40 or 41 points which at the time we kind of knew based on the the results from lil um and also just kind of the math we worked out that that wasn't going to be enough to even place top 128 and it was also set it's also set three it was kind of over it's not like i'm practicing for anything in the future with this set so i decided to drop after that so pretty you know I'm not happy with my performance, but I'm glad at least, if anything, it is Hamza, a really good friend of mine, especially in this community. So I'm really, really happy that, that he performed and he did what he did. So um, overall, I think the event was was really good. Um, shout out to, to PPG. I think they did an incredible job. I mean, there are little couple hiccups here and there with kind of the side events. If there was anything else, I didn't feel anything. And even the hiccups that they had were I, I feel like they were resolved pretty quickly and so they did like a really really good job now i mean they've obviously hosted big events really big events uh for other tcgs um however you know and they, they they've hosted lorcana before but nothing close to 2000 for lorcana so i think that's probably why it went as smooth as it did because they're already experienced in this space they've done it a lot and i mean i think it's just to be expected that a couple hiccups will happen when you got 2000 people um it's stuff is gonna happen but overall i think it was an incredibly smooth well-run uh event a very awesome inaugural event for disney lorcana um ravensburger should be super happy with themselves um everyone involved should be should be incredibly happy with themselves um it was just done really well and and the side events were cool on sunday i was able to play a few get some promos um out of that so they did they did that really well i don't think they really anticipated how much these promos would go because like the the amount of tickets you needed like it was if you weren't there basically how it worked was uh for every event you joined you had two tickets and then every time you won you got another two tickets except at the end they, they changed it to four and then you could redeem these tickets for prizes and like it was only 12 tickets or 14 12 tickets for a cinderella promo 14 for a rapunzel rap promo and so everybody was just going for those i know people were trading for tickets just so they could get the rapunzels or get the cinderellas it was just yeah they had a lot more prizes but 
that that was definitely the hot ticket where where the Cinderella and Rapunzel promote uh, promo cards. Um, uh, so yeah, so that was kind of my overall experience. Um, we'll get into other things when I'm talking to Hamza, kind of going over questions with him as far as like the the two game Swiss. Now that we've had an official event, how we really feel about things like that. But I don't. I, I mean, unless uh, I know. Jermax, you weren't there. I don't know if you have any other any any other input, but do you, I mean, do you have anything as far as that, or should we just go straight into it with Hamza? I want to talk to the man himself. All right. <laughs> so, so the big reason everyone's here listening to this podcast is our very own Hamza Khan. Congratulations on getting top eight. So I got to give a round of applause for you. You did incredible. I was there trying to watch. They tried to block us off. They didn't let people really like go and hover over, which I mean, it makes sense. Uh, but I really wanted to be right there and like and see the wins and, and, and everything. But um, but it was still cool seeing from afar just how well you're doing. So first, before we get into all the questions. Tell me about like kind of your your overall impressions, your your experience with uh atlanta like how do you think it went obviously you enjoyed yourself i would think that's safe to say <laughs> um but yeah just give your overall impressions um honestly i think it was one of the better events i've ever been to in terms of big constructed tcgs mm -hmm. um the staff was phenomenal the uh the venue of course was double booked with momocon and to a certain extent, it went as well as it possibly could. The check-in lines were super quick. They had uh, staff all over the place. Staff was super approachable. Um, never made me feel like, oh, I'm an idiot while I'm out here. Um, in terms of the actual gameplay, certain, like the actual event itself, um, I don't think you could really have asked for a better venue in that sense. Um, like there was space. I know the tables were a little narrow, but in terms of like, sure. I'm, a, I'm a big guy. Yeah. And I my arms were fully extended and I had no problems with that whatsoever. Now getting in between stuff was a little hard, but they how are you how are you gonna fit two thousand people in yeah. a small space, right? Um I think that they did a good job with the announcements. I think they did a good job with um just keeping track of time and being able to go through the entire thing. The judges were a little um they were it was the first event, so judging is gonna be hard, of course. And mm -hmm. I'm glad they had a tiered system available where you can appeal your decisions all the way to a head judge. Um, and as compared to like a GP that I've been to or like a championship sure. for magic that's happening, which I have played before. Um, I can say that this was one of the better well events for especially for a demographic that's all over the place. Sure. Now you had the hardcore gamers who were there, but they didn't seem like to be what the um what the like stereotypical like Yu-Gi-Oh player is right you always hear about those none of these people were like that um you had kids who were enjoying themselves <laughs> my bad Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> sorry yeah I didn't mean to hate on Yu-Gi-Oh I'm just my bad. <laughs> taking shots <laughs> they're like whoa that's a stereotype right? um <laughs> and so I really thought that from a organizational perspective I could not have really asked for anything better now of course are there hiccups do I wish there was food in the venue sure uh, but there was overall, not in the little space that we were in. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it went astonishingly as smooth as you possibly could. Um, going up to the specific round, going up to the, them not even letting you know where you ranked overall mm -hmm. and not knowing like how many games you needed. I think that was actually a smart decision, in my opinion. Because mm -hmm. um, then, even though people would ID, uh, it's just like it, it protects the information and it keeps you going as a competitive player. Sure. And knowing that I need to do my best at all points in time to be able to make it. So PPG, 10 out of 10, Robinsberger, 10 out of 10, Ryan, uh, the creator of the game, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. I think Super this was nice. a phenomenal event. And I think that if they continue with this, this game will only exponentially grow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with everything you said. I, I mean, I did, it, the tables were narrow and we're like, man, like every single game had to kind of like, uh, my mat was off hanging off yeah. and whatnot. these are like super minor things like no part of that hindered the experience of the game for me like i didn't at least feel like i was cramped but like you said you are a little bit of a bigger guy so maybe um maybe you were more cramped i don't know your leg space or something i don't know I, for me personally it wasn't bad um but yeah like you said i mean the food food in the venue would actually be super clutch there was a, a food court it you know there was food around but especially since there was another like momocon not too familiar with that is exactly 
Um, but there was another huge event there at the same time. So it, it got a little overcrowded sometimes. You didn't want to leave the event to have to go grab food and then potentially miss your next match or things like that. So you did have to bring snacks um, if you wanted to eat in between, or at least that's more optimal. They, get, they did give us an hour in between. Um, however, it was kind of like they started it at a certain point and games were still going on. So if you finished your game a little later, then you had less time. Um, but mm -hmm. overall, I don't, I think I, again, I think it was ran really, really smooth for a first event. Uh, they can only improve from here. And so hopefully, you know, they improve on some of those little things, but, um, all right. So to get more now, just about you, um, I want to start this off. We may have asked, I think we may have went around and, and, um, and talked about where we came from as far as TC TCG, but for anyone who hasn't um seen that episode or or heard about like where you've came from as far as tcg you know what is what is your experience with tcg how did you start um what kind of brought you to just trading card games in general and what uh what connected you with lorcana what made you start playing lorcana sure um so as a lot of us as pseudo millennials or millennials as a whole we sure. all started with Yu -Gi Oh in the anime yeah <laughs> um, and getting into the game from that um so Yu -Gi Oh was my first tcg i was a huge 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 fan um, of the anime and of course the card games itself mm -hmm. um, i never really played it super competitively um i got to like you know i, I went to i think synchros and that was it sure, so that yeah. was like <laughs> gxh so the, yeah, 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 a yeah. long time ago. Um, and that's when I probably stopped. I was never really into super competitive. It was just like casual play. Um, then in 2014, um, I started playing Magic a bit with some friends. Um, really kind of was into it, but kind of really wasn't. Didn't really understand the concept. Um, and then in college, I really got into it where I had locals going on. Um, and I would go very frequently. And so Magic was my really first TCT introduction into the competitive atmosphere the type of people type of games available sure um and i've been playing magic ever since relatively um i am primarily a pioneer and limited player mm -hmm. um, but i also sometimes do play modern um it's taking a bad back seat lately of course yeah um, yeah has, uh, has really taken over um so the reason i really enjoyed magic was just because there were so complex lines available you had so much diversity and depth available and it really required you to like engage with your opponent at all points in time um and, but the reason why i left primarily magic for lakana was i think the type of gameplay and mm -hmm. the value that it brought to tcgs as a whole sure. so my biggest thing about lakana is that it's a simple yet nuanced game in which if you are a good tcg player you will be good at this game sure. like it's because it's not there yet where you're not interacting with people on their turn you can't stop them from winning on their turn that kind of thing right i think it's a very fun game to get involved with without having those rules being super complex um, i think it's a perfect intro tcg across the entire board of all ages sure because everyone loves disney everyone thinks it's relatively simple to play and there's so many like starter decks and and things like that available for people to learn from a affordability perspective sure. um now granted the game's only been out for a year so mm -hmm. you can say take all my stuff with a grain of salt um but the other reason why lakana was really beneficial to me was i was there at the onset and so i can't be like oh well i didn't i wasn't there at alpha so i didn't know how simple the game used to be i was like i am there right now right. and i also had like you guys who were like hey like you guys just want to play this game like i've been heard about it at gen con i heard about it i saw like the mickey stuff like that sounds so cool i was like i'm a disney buff i like disney i don't know if i love disney i'm not like a i'm gonna go spend Shh, do disney trivia oh, what's up? <laughs> i said not like you're gonna like do some disney trivia or something like that yeah yeah, 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 yeah. sure um but it, the appeal is always there like we all grew up with disney so um, that on itself was the like visual allure and then the gameplay and the mechanics were the like cognitive slash like special thing that kept me going. Sure. Um, and so I, I love this game. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. I will spend two to three days a week playing this game probably for a long time. Um, and I think that it's one of those things where you don't have to love it to want to play it. I'm telling you this. 
you play it, you go pick up a starter deck, you go pick up, you see the colors, you see the princesses, yeah. you'll be hooked. Yeah. So, all in all, one of the best TCGs in existence. So, credit to this co creator um, who was there. Um, he did a phenomenal job and he knew exactly what kinks to work out going from Magic to, to Lotana. Sure. Uh, shout out to Honest Abe uh, TV for the follow. Um, and just real quick here for anyone who doesn't know. Um, so we have Hamza right dead center covering the S in Disney right here uh, in case you haven't seen him. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I mean, I think, like you said, we all, uh, or a lot of us at least started with something like Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon and watching the show and kind of getting involved with that. So I, I have a similar experience. I stopped more when like pendulums came out. So like five D's was where, where I ended, but, um, yeah, I, I agree with you as far as like, it's like the simplicity, but nuance. A lot of people like to say like, oh, this game's too easy. That's why they don't play it. But I don't know. I mean, it, if you see all these experienced uh, magic players, I think, um, I don't know the name. Maybe you do, but the guy who Frank won Hustle. Lil. Yeah, yeah, Frank yeah, Magic player, huge magic player, right? He's been in it one for literally like, one of the best. And and you could say like, oh, well, obviously he just came from magic to Lorcana and now he's he won the biggest event. Like, that's how easy it is. Um, but I think it's just kind of like learning a language, right? If you know, like Spanish, for example, it's going to be a little easier for you to learn Italian. There's similarities as opposed to someone who like only speaks English and they're trying to learn Italian. Like, it's going to be a little harder for them you know maybe that's a weird example but i don't know i think it kind of matches up like the transition is going to be a little bit easier for you especially when you're doing at the beginning of the game i know there's a lot of similarities to some of the cards in Lorcana as there were um to some of the early stages of magic um and so every game's got to start somewhere it's going to be a little simple you gotta want to bring people in and, and and it is a disney property overall so they they definitely want age groups all over like all from, from young to old um they want men and women to be able to enjoy the game and want to play the game if you just come out with something that's super ultra complex uh if you try to start off disney lorcana like where magic is right now it's just gonna, it, people aren't gonna want to play they're not gonna have as much fun getting into the game um and so i think you hit the nail on the head with with that so that's really cool um to learn from your experiences like how you came up uh it, real quick where did you where did you even hear of lorcana did you hear it f through gen con because i don't you didn't go to gen con right so not go to gen con. um i was at i believe it was d23 you were at um, d23 i was no no, no i was not oh. i saw this oh, okay 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 <laughs> i was like oh, i didn't know that no, 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 I saw the stream for D23, and I saw this card game coming out, and I'd known that there had been some other Disney games in the past mm -hmm. that had tried to work out, yeah. um, but it, it failed to find of certain, uh, to a certain degree the type of demographic they were looking for. Sure. Um, but I saw the cards, and I was like, ooh, this seems spicy. Sure. So, I mean, it took a year <laughs> or so after after uh, D23 to even like see anything of the rules and stuff. I was, I was a little behind on Pixelborn stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but that was my first iteration ever learning about the game itself. Okay. I, I mean, um, shoot, what was I, <laughs> what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I, I, I learned it from an ad on YouTube. I just remember that. I was like, I seen this card game. I'm like, I know my brother and I were trying to get into something. We try, we got into, ma I got into magic a little more than he did. He kind of fell off earlier than I did. And I was like, this seems cool. I sent it to him. We're like, let's go to Gen Con. It is this huge thing. So, um, that was really cool. I mean, it, I mean, real quick, Jeremy, to get you involved a little bit, where did you even hear of Lorcana? I have no idea. I think I looked <laughs> at it first as like, oh, these are selling big. Let's see if I could get my hands on some product from the first set. Oh, okay. And then yeah. I like actually, I actually cracked some packs and looked, and then I found locals right down the street, and the rest is history. Okay. I was well, killing it with the starter deck, and I was like, man, wait till I get a real deck in my hands, and you know. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I gotta get to Humza's level. Yeah, yeah. No, we all gotta get to Humza. Imagine all three of us <laughs> placing top one twenty eight. Well, Humza, you're you're not going to, you're not going to Chicago, right? Or I don't yeah. know. Yeah. You might. You might. Not. Oh, you're officially not. not. But I most likely will not be playing on the main event. Got it. Got it. So all y'all can take uh take a deep breath. You can let out a sigh of relief. Um, he will not be there, so you will not be coming up against him. Don't worry about it. 
<laughs> so let's move don't on you, to no no hold on don't you dare set the bar to one, top 128 only. That not was, in the that top was disrespectful eight. imagine if we all played top eight is what i meant to say top 128 is cool i'll Why take can't a let it go play but... each other in the finals <laughs> you and i can play in the yeah, finals let's do it i mean <laughs> i mean i guess technically no matter what you can place higher at chicago uh orthodox yeah no no matter what you're you will be placing higher but let's move on to uh the next thing the big thing the the headline 72 card humza so he's breaking the mold here um man you you i don't know if you saw i we went over how Spessy reacted to when decandio was playing 66 i can't even <laughs> imagine what he's going to say about 72. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait for that video he's if he just ever makes call one. You bad. <laughs> he's he's going to be like if I played in that tournament, oh my god. But uh and that uh, that oh, that uh, the Mickey's going to be able to pay for the defamation lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Get the lawyer up. But um all right, so yes, you guys heard that right? That was not I didn't misread or miss say that. I don't know what the word is, but it's 72 cards um real quick hamza go please explain why 72 because the thing is you need answers for everything without a side deck this is the only way that you can maybe sometimes inconsistently pull out what you need when you need it um i'm a big believer in as long as you have enough draw power as long as you have enough filtering you can get what you need when you need it sure and I played 72 cards over the 60 because I put an answer for anything and everything that I would ever see. Um, <laughs> Did anybody else a lot of people are... What's up? Said, is anybody else turned on? Orthodox <laughs> 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 is. Uh, <laughs> um, oh it's one of those things where you can play 60, you can play 66, you can do all those things. Um, but if I need an answer and I need this, and the thing is, the reason, the other reason I play 72 cards is that there's so many different lines I can go with based on what's available versus okay. the same consistency that everyone's looking for. I believe in toolbox decks. That's my big thing. I was a toolbox player in EDH, toolbox player in Modern. I think toolbox decks are very good because, yeah, it's, it's a bunch of silver bullets. And until we have a very consistent, like, OTK kind of deck or very consistent um like deck metagames as a whole like oh i'm playing the quote-unquote tron for uh magic sorry, sorry for lorcana that kind of thing this is how i would play the game as a whole um now 72 is a little wild right everyone else is like 70 makes sense, 66 makes <laughs> it's a little sense. Wild. Makes sense. 64 makes sense right everyone goes like yeah exactly as uh john said that's did you did i hear that right and i was like yeah i play 72 and I think it trigger it. It seems to be a topic of contention for a lot of people, because um, mm -hmm. they're like, "That doesn't even make sense. You can never get your answer." I was like, "Can't you though? Um, you play another cantrips, and you can get it, get there." Um, so it wasn't like it was a magic number or anything like that. It was just like I would have played anything that was that gave me all the answers that I needed at a specific point. Sure, it just felt right to it you. Felt, just felt right, exactly. Well, Dude, I, I think Queen of Hearts. I love. I love it. <laughs> I think to speak to that, um, I'm also the type of person, like, I, I do agree that 60 is best. Like, you should really, really try to play 60, um, just percentage-wise. It's going to be your best chance of getting what you need when you need it. Uh, however, I mean, you have Develop Your Brain, you have Popsicle, you have Flavisham, you have Gramatala, you have Gaston, which not a lot of people uh gaston gaston i don't know whatever uh he, he, which not a lot of people play in this deck anymore i think the big thing with gaston and why i like him w it, with lucky dime is just the fact that gaston was one of those cards where in set two if you played him you got you got the value from his his ability however it was rare that you got the three lore at least in my experience just because obviously you'd get rid of rid of them so now you combine them with lucky dime not only do you get the value from his ability but you also get at least the guaranteed three lore assuming obviously you play him after uh or you can just use them like you said to filter so 72 is a lot <laughs> i don't know if i can like i mean you place top eight so it's kind of hard to argue against it however it's like do you need the two McDucks? 
do you need four Hades? Like, like I see things and I'm like, do you really need, do you need four Gaston? But you have so much filtering and draw, like you said, that it, it probably is pretty tough to not get into what you need. Um, and I'm the same way as far as going over 60. It's like, as long, if you have that filtering, you can go over 60 a bit. But uh, yeah, 72 is, is something I never would have thought. I did actually, there, so there's a, the manager of Labyrinth, for anyone who doesn't know, that's, he, uh, he runs a team where he has like No I'm Not, RMB, Wonderland, some other people, some other uh, really good players, and they're all in a team. I think like five of them plays top 64 or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, and I, I was talking to him. I actually happened to play him in draft. I didn't know. And then we were kind of watching from afar the, the top, I think it was top 16, and we were talking about it, and he was talking about how his players are in there, and I was like, yeah, my boy Hamza is in there, 72 cards. He's like, 72? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah he's like well i was like yeah i want him to get in there so like people like talk about him so that's why i want him to go as far as he can he's like well i mean top 16 they're going to be talking about it so here we are now i'm sure that's going to be um in the other interviews that you have or whoever you talk to um i'm sure that is going to be uh the headline for most people <laughs> it's it's crazy it's a crazy thing and it breaks the mold it, it doesn't only break the mold it just completely crushes through like i don't know um so it, it's cool to have like kind of that idea of uh, your, your thought process behind it and and to show that you don't have to have exactly 60 in order to perform um to perform well um in fact you could have a lot more than 60 and perform well if you're good enough I, I, but i also think you're just a pilot you've been running red blue since set one and Correct. so you've just through each set been adding um, some better cards and cards to help you out even more to get you to this point. So, um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's do, I guess you kind of broke down the deck a little bit, but let, let's break it down a little bit more. So what is, or, okay, let's say this, why McDuck Manor? I, I just have to ask that. I, I see the two McDuck Manors. Ha did that really do anything for you? Was that um, a big thing? It won me my. I played double McDuck against my top sixteen match to go to top wow. eight, and that was the reason why I won that game. Wow. <laughs> what what uh, <laughs> color combination did you play? What? What color combination were you playing? Do you remember? Amber Steel. They could Oof. not get rid of it. Yeah, no yeah. Sin, no removal. If they don't have the that Titans, or I mean, yep. a long game Zeus helps, but yeah that kid that's a really rough one right there i mean amber steel's already a great matchup for you but you throw down a couple mcduck manners and i don't know buddy yep. uh you said yep. maui's fish hook was really good for you a one of in a 72 card deck and you saw um, did you see it a good amount was it that helpful i did i played against a ruby uh emerald evasive deck in my top uh i think this was top 128 match Okay. No, prior to that point, this is like round seven that I played it. Oh, okay. And okay. that was the reason I won that, that game. Okay. Um, well, let's let me ask this. Why? Well, how many uninkables are in here? Uh, twenty-four, I believe. Twenty-four. I mean, you have seventy-two. It's the God. It's just wow. That is crazy to me. <laughs> I can't. I dude. I'm staring at this deck, and I'm just. I'm in I awe. I don't even know what to ask. Go ahead, Jeremy. You ask something. Uh, <laughs> The only question, if you know, if this event was going to happen tomorrow and you're playing again, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you changing anything? That's a good uh, one. Just set, set three only. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. No. Every single one of those cards, all of my tech cards helped in some way or the other. You, um, you there were there were no points where you were like, man. I wish I got to this thing. Like you needed that thing and you didn't get to it. I mean, that happens regardless of how many cards you have, but I mean, 72 does make that tougher. Correct. Correct. Um, no, uh, even in my top eight match, I, there wasn't really anything I could do at that point, but, um, it was like every single of these cards. I mean, I think the only thing I might change is have four Medusas instead of two. I got so much flack for that. Okay. Um, they're like, what do you mean we're running two? That's people would argue it's the top thirty card in the in the game. And I was like, mm, I don't <laughs> top know, thirty. Yeah, I think it's a little better than that. But but I mean, uh, w would you, you just, just replace... pull out the golden Mickey and then tell him to shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> would you just that, replace but... the the Lady Tremaine's or or, or would you run seventy four? <laughs> mm, I might replace the Lady Tremaine. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just crazy. like Lady Tremaine against Cogsworth or post be prepared. That's the reason why I play it. I think it's okay. golden. That's that. 
That's sure. It's the same reason why I do it. And now with Icebox coming in set four, it's going to just be even better. Um, exactly. All right. Uh, well, let me real quick before I go in with this next question. You did lose twice in Swiss, like O two yes. loss. Yes. What were the, those two? And and okay, so looking back at those two matchups, go ahead. What were the color combinations? I think one was a mirror. One was I. I don't remember. You'll you'll go ahead and say. But um, why did why were those games so tough? Do you feel like there was anything any mistakes you made? Was it just kind of poor draws? Go into that, sure. those two losses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so my two losses were towards the end because I was 3-0 through rounds 1, 3, and 3 before the lunch. Um, then I went, I think, 1-1, 2-0, 0-2, 2-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0,
yeah, this this player is an absolute godsend of this deck. He is so phenomenal. Um, loves the Pascal. It's a really cool deck. I think he's on Twitter and such. Um, re- there's a really good deck tech about his own deck. Um, but that matchup, I was like, there is no way. And the really ironic part about this is I played four Ruby Amethyst in my Swiss. I 2 owed three of them, and I went 1-1 to a local player who we play with, and the only reason I lost was... Uh, well, the only reason I, I got... was because he tripped um, Queen Castle me. I can't do anything about that either. Oh, yeah, that's so tough. How it's going to hurt you. So, um, yeah, this this play, this matchup was... When I saw it, I was like, there is no way I can get through this. Uh, and it's a pretty standard list overall, honestly. He, he does run the yeah. Yzmas, which is really interesting. Right, that was a little interesting, because I've only... i seen one other deck recently run it, but it's usually not yeah. in there. Uh, the four Pascals is also interesting. The one-up Chernobog mm-hmm. is also interesting. Uh, but clearly, this person knew this deck really, really, really well. So this is the only one where I was like, yeah, I got obliterated, which is ironic. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was in the top eight. But I'll take it. <laughs> uh, there's a reason they made it that far, too. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was the only one. The Joker when I had a chance, I guess. Um, and the, the you always have a chance in the mirror. Sure. So that one I will never feel like, oh, well, that was such a bad matchup for me. This one... Unfortunately, did did it for me. Did he O two you, or did you get a game? Oh no, he O two me. Oh okay. Yeah. Straight up. Wait, so yeah. the one where he had the four mini mouses, did he go first or second? Um, he went first in that game. Okay. What happened the other game? He went. Um, there was. I. I Were think you just not finding was... what you needed, or what? No, I did. I had all the removal. Seventy two cards. Just... Oh, he <laughs> did the go bounce package. So like he just kept times. he just kept doing that. <laughs> yep, yep. And I was like, oh, never mind. That makes sense. I mean, you have the thing. The funny thing with Ruby Amethyst is, I, if we looked across the, I mean, at least for me, I play. I think Ruby Amethyst was the most present. Um, it was. Yeah, I played Top it the most, eight. and you can really tell the you know the difference in people who are playing it and how good certain people are compared to others, just because they know how to prioritize what against what and they know how to be patient um with certain things like obviously the mini mouse is an easy call if you're going first um but then holding on to the uh the the goats and just knowing how important that is to keep put, applying that pressure when he's going second um and making it so that, that that's the big thing with the ruby sapphires like you're really just it's control right so you're just trying to maintain until you can get to lucky dime Bell, Lucky Dime, um, Tamatoa, whatever the case is. So if you just keep applying the pressure to where you have to remove things, now it becomes a situation where it's like, I don't really have time to play Dime because if I do, if I take a turn off, he's just going to continue to do this goat thing or continue to just get the lore. So I need to make sure I, I actually wipe his cards out. Um, and I think probably what it sounds like is that he was just aware of that. It was just he knew that what he needed to do against you and knew what your game plan is and that he just needs to make sure that he's ahead the whole time so that you don't have time to catch up with the dime uh, combination. Um, For sure. Especially since they don't have, uh, they don't have removal in Ruby Amethyst. Yep. Um, for, for items. Uh, and all right, so um, continuing off of that, what would you say was your MVP card? What, what, what was the one card that you just thought was that got you there more times than not you were you came in clutch in more situations than others um and you just felt really good about playing it i'm gonna go controversial here hades hades i or hades hades is like i i was always like you don't need it in this but having played with you played against you and in so many times it it works really well here, like especially because your game plan is the dime game plan. That's really what the end of the day is, right? Is just remove, remove, remove until dime comes in, and so you don't really care if they have a Actually, lot of ink because at the end of the day, you're just gonna remove the next thing that they play, um, and it just gives you that extra time with dime as well. So, like, what was it, Hades? Do you agree with that? Is that kind of how it is? That's how I see it from afar, but how do you see it? What was it with Hades specifically? Hades, the reason why it was 
it was spot removal with a body on board that was less ink than the Maleficent, right? Because there's no other card that does the same thing for you. Sure. It's unconditional removal. I mean, yeah, it's a three six, so it loses to Medusa. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also has a big big body on it that it stays on the board. I think specifically so the reason why i say hades is because i had a a round nine win and in to go to top 64 that Mm -hmm. was where my match at breaker ended up going that's the wild part about this tournament is after going after starting out so strong i was at a point where if i did not two and oh my last opponent i wouldn't even make top 128 it was either i made top 64 or i didn't even do that right and they played they played red fossa the red ruby uh amber mufasa deck. Yep, yep, yep. no it's a great deck that deck performed more not many people played it but it was yeah. doing very well and this is the only singular removal you have for mufasa each time yeah and so i will like this is the most clutch card in the planet it does so well for what you need to and of course i won that game because i dimed off the hades to for, for game yeah so i think the i think yeah, people say you don't need four, you only need two, or like, oh, that ink they're gonna get. But I was like, if I'm playing Amber Steel, if I'm playing these people, they don't care about the ink. Right. The ink doesn't do anything to them. They only if I even play like Emerald Steel, which who who needs the ink there? But they're if I'm playing Hades at that point, they probably lost. Sure. Um, That's when, as they're telling it, you that, you're just sliding up that golden Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think Hades was. I, I mean, I would argue that or Bell. Sure, uh, but I, I I usually like Hades more. Um, I think the art's also really cool. So I'm, I'm a little biased in that sense, but of course, sure. Bell's clutch, right? You need yeah. five oil at the end of the game. Bell it is, and uh, because it only yeah. costs four, so a lot of the times you could just dime Bell on the same turn. Exactly. Um, but okay, yeah. I mean, I I understand from that from that standpoint with Hades, like how effective it can be. It's just that extra removal too, uh, that you have, and like you said, like you could throw in a dragon fire, let's say for example, but. You have an actual body with Hades and something that you do a lot, which is smart. And I, I don't see a lot of red play blue players do, um, or at least what they weren't doing was utilizing their seven cost cards, seven plus cost cards to sing B prep right. and then to gain board control after the fact or to throw yep. your dime after the fact. Um, so that's a really big thing too, that it's a seven cost that removes something, but also you could sing be prepared. I think that's kind of a, a thing. Peop- it's something um people don't really think about uh, when they're thinking about playing hades it's really just strictly for the removal aspect of it but that extra um that extra i don't know would you i guess benefit of it uh can be huge in certain situations so um okay so going on to to a more general question like something that i can go over a little bit also but for you um how are your feelings about the two game Swiss format? Do you like it? Do you think it should change? What do you what are your overall feelings about it? I think it's a wild concept, but I understand why it exists. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that people like me who got o two to two two times and you feel like, oh well, I got no chance had all the chance in the world to make it to top eight mm-hmm. Uh, versus if you go to a good O2 twice in a three game format, you're probably done. Unfortunately, because sure. you got four losses on your belt. Um, yeah. I think it, it really hurts the people who are in the middle of the pack. Cause just cause how we understand how bell curves work, right? Yeah. If you under, you're in the 45th to 90th, like that kind of percentile, that's going to hurt. But if you're on either end, it's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Lurkana wanted to be unique, and I want it wanted to prevent the ID stuff that they were going for. Uh, unfortunately, as you may have seen in the top like sixteen, top well, top one twenty eight, a lot of people started drawing into the top one twenty eight, mm-hmm. um, just because they were. I think it was five zero going into round six, and you could just draw, 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 draw into the top one twenty eight. Sure. Um, so it is pre- like preventative in that sense. It should have been preventative in that sense. Um, at the same time it helped me because i know i knew exactly what i needed to do to make it yeah based on the point system which is very different than the three game for- format i knew exactly who and what could happen and what the thresholds were, were based on the two game system and i do like and i think the reason why i say that and the reason why i'm more okay with it is because um Ravensburger changed the rules of the one 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 four to three three seven mm-hmm. that was the biggest thing if they, if they had not changed it, I would be very anti uh, the two game format, but I'm I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, now, 
Will there be complaints consistent about the two-game format? Yes. Will people say it's not like other games, so it doesn't make logical sense? Also, yes. Um, because it feels bad if you win one game every single time and you don't really have a chance at all of making top. If you went one, 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 one every single time, you wouldn't make it, right? The sure. rule was, or the math ended up being, you needed a six, you needed two o five to six times to have a good chance. Yeah. Um, and that is very, very, very hard, especially when you're up against the top players in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, to be able to two o even once it takes a lot, and sure. you need your like, it needs to go perfectly. Because if you have the nuts draw, you have the nuts draw. That's just how it is. Yeah. So that is the one like caveat I have to that. Now, the reason why I also think it's good is because in the top 128, they allowed you to have a three-game format. If we keep it that way, it's good, but it also makes you question, why did you do it in the first place, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm okay with the basic structure that they have. I understand why they did it, and I think it makes the kind of unique, but I don't think everyone's going to be happy to continue doing so. Sure. Uh, I agree. I agree with that. I mean, the thing is, like you said, going no matter what, going like o two early. Like my my first game, I was one one. Then I went o two in the second round. That felt horrible. I mean, then it was two o two o after that. But um, you do get that sense of if you can string together a few two o's, you you still are in it and you still have a chance. Um. And so I do get that point of it. And especially like with the intention of making it a little more, I guess, mysterious as far as like, am I in it? Am I not? It might, it prevents people from dropping. Like you said, it prevents more people from IDing. Um, I do get it. I understand it. Do I think it really, really sucks going one, one? Um, and not being able to play the third game to s- either know factually if you were going to win or not. Does that suck? Yeah, I think it does suck. Um, but, and, and it's just, it's just hard to 2 0. It's just very tough to do so. And it's tough to have a deck that can 2 0 because then it just has to be a strong deck on the draw. You got to hope that you don't get screwed on the draw or, you know, on the play if you get screwed, like, a, like if you break your hand, um, then it can be really bad because you just don't want to lose the game that you're on the play. And so if you break that, that, that hand when you're on the play, um, now you know you're going into the next game on the draw and it just you know you're at a disadvantage already inherent inherently so it's like that could bring you down um but i do get it like you said it makes sense i do like the aspect of feeling like you can lose a couple times but still even if it's going to be really tough you can still make it um and and so yeah uh, i mean i think maybe for you like if when you o2'd in in round 8 that might have been demoralizing if that was like a best of three round, and now you're right. like, do I even make it? But you knew you had to two o. If you two o, then you pretty much secured your spot into top sixty four. So, you know, y- you still have that bit of hope there. Um, but yeah, so I mean, overall, I agree. I agree with that. And uh, so let's let's round finish it off. The last question that I have for you right now um, is. Do you plan on continuing this Ruby Sapphire grind through set four? Um, now listen, Sisu looks phenomenal. Uh-huh. Ice Block looks phenomenal. Um, definitely the type of text that we needed. Um, I have not played any of set four yet, so sure. yeah. probably a good reason I'm not playing in Chicago. <laughs> um, but I probably will because this is what I'm comfortable with until somebody tells me otherwise. Sure. Um, I think that it will always, just like the Ruby Amethyst and Amber Steel will always exist in the meta. Um, now, do I think right now it's the best deck? No. Um, more because I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I've been told that Amethyst, Ruby Amethyst is really hard to beat right now really? with this deck. Yeah, mm. allegedly. Okay. Uh, but I, I do think the tier one deck is the Diablo em- uh, Emerald Steel from what I've been hearing. Okay. Um, but again, played any, any pixel born because it was actually really sad set four came out and everyone had um the cards in their deck for locals and i was like hey i can't change any of my deck yet i still gotta play set three because i had to grind it out for a minute sure um so as a result of that like um i think it's still gonna be a tier one one and a half deck though um and you're gonna see a lot of it in chicago for sure oh yeah uh 
it's just not going to have as do- as much of a dominance, I think, okay. uh, as it did with the introduction of Lucky Dime. Because that's what put the deck over the top. In the uh, I mean, what are you going to do, dude? You got to add... You gotta add Sisu's ice boxes, brawls potentially. Yeah, like you might deck, be sitting, deck. <laughs> you, might, you might be sitting at ninety. I mean, <laughs> shoot, I, it feels like it's your hard. It's hard for you to detach yourself from some of these cards, and so I don't know if you'll be able to right. do it, my brother. Right. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, man. Um, so Germax, do you have any additional questions for uh Mister Top Eight here? Um, the Hamza Khan, uh, s- serialized Mickey Man. Do you have yeah. anything left for this yeah. guy? Did anybody get salty after you beat the shit out of them? <laughs> Did you tell them? Oh. Just so you know, uh, it was 72 car. <laughs> that fish hook um. that I had both games, uh, that's a one of in this 72 car deck. The salties, I think, that was a little bit hard. I think the people who knew what the matchups were and were just not favored in that matchup felt pretty bad, just like at the top tables. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, playing Sapphire Steel in the top sixty-four match was. How good did you feel when you heard that you were playing Sapphire Steel? Like how? Well, that was so they sent out deck lists at midnight, and I'd fallen asleep because we had driven that day. Um, and so I got the, my roommate who was there with me told me, Hey, like, did you check out who you're playing? And I was like, what do you mean? I already know who I'm playing. Um, and they had deck lists available for everyone. And so I, I woke up in the morning of top 64 knowing that my first round was Sapphire Steel. And I was like, I could not have asked for anything better. It was that or <laughs> Went back to sleep. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was, I was already awake at that point. Um, so that was, abs- I mean, honestly, the, the argument is the only reason I top eight is because my matchups and the games went the way that I did. Um, because I played Emerald. Sorry, I played Sapphire Steel round one. I played um, Emerald Steel round two, which would have beat me. It should have beat me. Um, and then I played um, Amber Steel for the top eight to get into the top eight. Um, two, two out of those three matchups are winnable for me. There, there, there should be. That's not instant wins, but it should win immediately. And then, of course, my top eight was against a Ruby Amethyst player, which I have like a fifty-ish percent matchup with. And I had felt good um, throughout the entire tournament, but like some people run one were like, "Oh, I can't win at all because I what, what the deck looks like." Right. So it's just one of those things where you're like, "Oh, well, like, I'll take it," um, and it needs to it like it works out the way that it does. Yeah. So yeah, salt did salt exist to a certain extent, Probably. but that's about it. Not that not that they were uh, vocal about it, dude. R and B was feeling so good that he was not the sapphire steel that played you <laughs> i'm looking oh, at his deck right now and like that it, it is just not set up to beat ruby i mean they're at a disadvantage regardless but this is definitely not set up to beat ruby sapphire yeah. in any capacity so oh yeah. man god bless but uh a great guy. So no I no yeah, i mean no yeah for sure i i just think it's funny that like it, it of course, like he dodged it for sure. He dodged you, um, and the ruby, say, ruby sapphire. The best thing about the top eight is the diversity that we saw in their decks yeah. overall. Like, look at the. Of course, the winner, as we've all talked about, the off meta deck that was this. This person is phenomenal. Oh, dude, Josh, this this deck is made. crazy. I don't, I can't even begin yeah. to kind of like comprehend what this deck does and how it did so well. Like. I'm almost here. If we look at the spiciness level, which I'm, pr- I'm, I'm assuming is just like how different is this deck compared to others? That's I don't even really know what spiciness means. But seventy eight percent spicing, dude. I, that I don't get it. Like what? Like I do. I can. I don't know. That I I was telling you guys. You know, like we, we drove on the way home. Shout out to my brother, by the way. I could never drive as long as he did, dude. Um, shout out to him for that. But um, I, I'm like, dude. I have to. I'm gonna have to rewatch this. I'm gonna rewatch, or just not rewatch. I'm gonna watch it, um, to see how he played. Cause I I cannot comprehend this deck in any way, shape, or form, and how it got first. I. He's got to be a great player. He obviously teched this deck. So congrats to Josh, man. I, I could tell he was super excited too. He has to be a great player. Made, made an 
an off meta deck that came in dominated did super well i wonder i wonder what his record was in swiss um he was one of the 504 players okay well he came in and performed and and it worked obviously i had always thought like fairy godmother's ability was pretty solid and i was like i always tried to think of a way to fit her into some sort of deck and i could never think about it i'm like I don't know, she's just not playable right now, but apparently I'm completely wrong. Uh, she's apparently the most playable card that there is. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, that, that's really all I had to say, um, or all the questions I had for you. I'm just extremely happy that you, you made it as far as you did. Um, like, congratulations again. And, and yeah, man. Um, Jeremy, I'm is there anything to call else? You a friend. I'm, yeah. I'm proud to call you a friend. You represented. You <laughs> represented Chicago. Chicago uh, represented <laughs> Lost in Lorcana podcast. Look at that. Um, and, and, and yeah, there, is there anything else that, that you have to say? Um, do you want to thank you know me for any reason? I don't know. You know uh, shout no, me shout out for what did I do? For never letting me <laughs> totally not playing. play 72 cards. <laughs> Dude, hey, hey, you yeah. know what if there's anything that i did which was i did absolutely nothing to get you to top eight i did try to convince you super hard to not draw your last two rounds yes i don't know you if did. you would have made i don't i don't know you might have still made top 64 if you did but trying to heavily convince you not to do it because i had confidence in you and your game and so just remember <laughs> that yeah, oh, I, I, I wasn't know. there. Please don't forget you me when you're when you're a household name, please. <laughs> you, you could probably thank me for always pushing you to keep playing that deck and not switch, and probably playing four queens because <laughs> yep. you didn't you, want to you lose anybody like me. Hundred percent. You were the reason I play. And John, you're the reason I played th uh, three Judies. I was. You're dime. Yes. Oh, dude. Cool. So the invoice is in your email. Make sure to check that after the podcast. <laughs> But no, in all seriousness, that was all you. Um, I'm just happy that I got to be there to watch you do it and support you and everything. And and uh, I'm glad you won't be. No, actually, I wish you were going to Chicago. I, I love the competition. I love playing you, even though we always want to play each other in the finals. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so. All right, guys, um, I think that that's everything. Uh that's the interview with Hamza Khan. We are officially the first interview. We might we probably won't be the most viewed, but it's the first one. So always remember that we inv interviewed Hamza Khan first. So once he's on every morning breakfast table in the newspaper about how he wins consecutively and how he's going to win nationals, everything like that. Um, okay. Just know that we were the first to interview him. And so uh, yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, uh, is there anything else we're about to go? Is there anything else with, for you guys? I just want to say shout out to the top eight competitors. They were all great. Shout out to everyone who was there. Absolutely. Very nice people. And I hope to see all of them at the next event that I'm at. All right. Anything from you, Jermax? Uh, Hummus is better than everybody else in that top eight. Okay. They're all trash. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> shut, up, shut up, bro. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks for hopping into the live stream if you're still here. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.